Friendships are an important part of a man's life. Friends are those men you can count on when the chips are down. They'll back you up even when the whole world is against you. Friends are those men who will buy you a beer or a soda when you lose a job or your lady dumps you. While the man friendship looks like a simple relationship, its history is actually quite interesting and complex. The virtues of duty and loyalty have remained the same guiding principles in man friendships throughout time. However, how men express those principles in a friendship has, have gone through fascinating changes in the course of human history. Man friendships during the 19th century were marked by an intense bond and filled with deeply held feeling and sentimentality. Man friendships in many instances had a similar intensity as romantic relationships between men and women. Essentially, it was a continuation of the heroic friendship of the ancient world, coupled with the emphasis on emotion common to the Romantic Age. A fervent bond did not necessarily imply a sexual relationship. The idea that these ardent friendships in some way compromised a man's heterosexuality is largely a modern conception. I don't know. Who was it who always used to say that? Men during this time freely used endearing language with each other in daily interaction and letters. For example, Daniel Webster, an American senator and one of this country's greatest orators, often began his letters to male friends with my lovely boy and ended them with very affectionately yours. Even letters by manly man Theodore Roosevelt to his friends were filled with sentimental language that would make most men today rather uncomfortable. From the Civil War through the 1920s, it was very common for male friends to visit a photographer's studio together to have a portrait done as a memento of their love and loyalty. Photographers would offer various backgrounds and props the men could choose from to use in the picture. Sometimes the men would act out scenes. Sometimes they'd simply sit side by side. Sometimes they'd sit on each other's laps or hold hands. The men's very comfortable and familiar poses and body language might make the men look like gay lovers to the modern eye, and they could very well have been, but that was not the message they were sending at the time. The photographer's studio would have been at the center of town, well known by everyone, and one's neighbors would having been sitting in the waiting room just a few feet away. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Because homosexuality, even if thought of as a practice rather than an identity, was not something publicly expressed, these men were not knowingly outing themselves in these shots. Their poses were common and simply reflected the intimacy and intensity of male friendships at the time none of them. These photos would have caused their contemporaries to bat an eye. When portable cameras for the amateur photographer became more widely available, they allowed men to photograph themselves in a greater range of more spontaneous situations, and the practice of sitting for formal portraits together waned in the 1930s. The snapshots usually were developed by someone else who would have gotten a look at all of them. So again, these pictures were not likely purposeful expressions of gay love, but rather captured the very common level of comfort men felt with one another during the early 20th century. Some men see these photographs and wrongly conclude that these men were expressing their closeted gay tendencies for the camera. Actually, when you start sifting through old photos, you find that these kinds of poses were not aberrations, but were actually quite commonplace. The photos open up a window into a picture of manliness quite foreign to us now. One of the reasons male friendships were so intense during the 19th and early 20th centuries is that socialization was largely separated by sex. Men spent most their time with other men, women with other women. In the 50s, some psychologists theorized that gender, segregated socialization spurred homosexuality, and as cultural mores changed in general, snapshots of only men together were supplanted by those of co-ed groups. After World War II, casually touching between men in photographs decreased precipitously. It first vanished among middle-aged men, but lingered among younger men. But in the 50s, when homosexuality reached its peak of pathologization, eventually they too created more space between themselves, and while still affectionate began to interact with less ease and intimacy. There are several reasons why men were so damn affectionate with each other back in the day. You okay? Yeah. First, men were free to have affectionate man relationships with each other without fear of being called a queer because the concept of homosexuality as we know it today didn't exist then. America didn't have the strict straight gay dichotomy that currently exists. 
Affectionate feelings weren't strictly labeled as sexual or platonic. There wasn't even a name for homosexual sex. Instead, it was referred to as the crime that cannot be spoken. It wasn't until the turn of the 19th century that psychologists started analyzing homosexuality. When that happened, men in America started to become much more self-conscious about their relationships with their buds and traded the close embraces for a stiff pat on the back. The man hug was born. And I don't think last night was a bad thing. Okay. Another reason for the 19th century's intense man friendships was that the social structure of society during this time helped foster such intense bonds. Men and women basically lived in separate homosocial worlds until they got married. There wasn't much interaction between the sexes at that time. This separation led many young men to fulfill their needs for physical affection and emotional companionship with other dudes. The man friendship underwent some serious transformations during the 20th century. Men went from lavishing endearing words on each other and holding hands to avoiding too much emotional bonding or any sort of physical affections whatsoever. Fear of being called gay drove much of the transformation. Ministers and politicians decried homosexuality as being incompatible with true manhood, and like most deviant behavior in the 1950s, homosexuality was associated with communism. It's not true that American men are no longer affectionate with each other at all. Hand-holding and lap-sitting are out, but putting your arms around your buddies is still common. Physical affection seems more common among high school and college-age men, a time when friendships are closer than among middle-aged men, and this has probably always been the case more or less. Although it may also have to do with generational and cultural changes. It was also popular for men to get portraits done with the guys they worked with. When a photo studio wasn't nearby, snapshots were taken. Sociologists have noticed that millennial boys seem much more comfortable with showing affection for each other than their fathers did. Some theorize that millennial boys have become more comfortable with touching because their generation is less cynical and more cooperative and group-oriented. So, what do you think is the future of male intimacy? Thank you for watching. Please support this channel by pressing the subscribe and like buttons. See you in the next video. Nobody's got to know Ooh, No, no No one's got to know Ooh.